mark the hard code. In this video, we dive into the little problem, CLS and DCLS binary tree. This problem uh, revolves around efficiently converting a binary tree into the string format and vice versa. Is this not a coding exercise? It's a crucial skill for handling tree related structures in real world application. Let's dive in. We here, given serialization is a process of converting a data structure or object into a sequence of bits so that it can be stored in a file or memory buffer or transmitted across a network connection link to be reconstructed later in the same or, or another computer environment. Design an algorithm to serialize and deserialize a binary tree. There is no restriction on how your serialization or deserialization algorithm should work. You need to ensure that a binary tree can be serialized to a string and this string can be deserialized to the original tree structure. So here, a uh, given example is, they have given the tree right here. They given the tree in the array format. So we just need to return the same in array format. It's just like whatever the tree is given, we should output the same. But this is subjected to the serialization and then deserialization. So in example two as well, we have seen the root as empty list, we written the empty list. So the constraints here are the number of nodes in the trees in the enclosure range of 0 to 10 power 4 and the node value lies in the enclosure range of minus 7 to 1000. So here we can see the code uh, snippet they have given uh, initially. Uh, so serialize here, uh, encodes a tree to a single string and then the type of root like this one is a tree node and the return type is string. So for deserialization, this decodes your encoded data to the tree. Basically the type of the data is string here and the return time is tree node. So here we can see that they have initialized the uh, uh, serialization deserialization uh, using this class and then uh, the answer is like how they are forming the answer. Uh, here they are just calling the deserialization method after the serialization. So basically our uh, tree data goes to serialization, deserialization and then uh, we should return the tree in the same format which is given as an input. So I hope you got the problem statement. Uh, here. Uh, is the task is twofold. First, serialization. We need to write a function that takes a binary tree and converts it into a string format while preserving the tree data structure. And then the next is deserialization. So we must then design a function to take the string and reconstruct the exact same binary tree. So this problem is not only about understanding the trees but also efficiently encoding and uh, decoding tree structures. So let's look into the approach here. Approach is using the recursive uh, depth for serialization and deserialization. So the algorithm starts like this. We start with an empty array to store the serialized values uh, and then we perform a depth for search traversal and then we append the nodes to the array and then if a node is empty, we add a placeholder n to indicate that the node is empty in the deserialization process uh, and then we join the array to form the serialized string. So next is the deserialization step. So here we start uh, with splitting the serialized string using the delimiter. Uh, and then we initialize the index pointer and then recursively build the tree using the help function and then it, if the value is n, then none for the empty node. So rebuild the left and the right subtrees recursively and then return the root node. So let's look in the flowchart. So we start with serializing the tree and how do we do serialize here using the DFS traversal and then uh, we append the nodes to the array and then we handle the empty nodes with n as a placeholder and then we end the deserialization process here and then here we deserialize the string so split the string using the delimiter and then rebuild the tree recursively and then um, we just end the uh, deserialization process that comes to end to the algorithm in the dry run. So here we see that the root node is 1 and then the left shell is 2 and the right shell is 3. So let's look at the simulation process. We, we start with the empty array and then we begin the DFS traversal with the root node 1. And then uh, we append the value of 1 to the array and the array now becomes uh, just this one. Uh, this have 1 in this array. And then we move to the left shell 2 and then append its value to the array. So now the array is 1 comma 2. Uh, we using this, uh, we converting the values to the string and storing it because we, we need to serialize it into string format, right? So we are using the array and then at the end we will be using the dot join method for using the delimiter uh, comma. So that's why we uh, are actually storing them uh, with a string format. Next is left shell of the two is none, right? So uh, we mark it with n in the array, hence the array becomes this one. So and then the right shell of the 2 is also none. So we mark it with n in the array. So the array becomes like this. And then we move to the right shell 3. This one. Right shell of the 1, right? 3. So here we append its value to the array. And then now, now the array becomes this one. And the left shell of the 3 is also none, right? So uh, we mark it with n. So now the array is this one. So now uh, we mark the... So right shell of the 3 is also none. So we mark it with n. So 
now the final array is this one so now we got all the uh, nodes covered and then we just join uh, this array using the dot join method with the delimiter as comma to get the serialized string this one so next is the deserialization process so we deserialize using the dot split method of the string and then we get an array like this which is the same array as this so first we begin with so we begin with the recursive reconstruction uh, with the index pointer i is equal to 0 uh, we uh, we using the index to uh, traverse across the array since it's a recursive function we need to maintain this index uh, at the global level or it's like a outer function level to and it should be accessible in the inner function level we can use the non local for that so the current value is 1 right so uh, the i is equal to 0 the value is 1 right so we create a node with value 1 and then we move to the left shell of the node so which is uh, 2 right so we recursively create a left subtree and then the current value is 2 so we create a node with value 2 and then we move to the left shell of the 2 so which is n here so we marked it as a none in our and then we move to the right shell index 3 which is n here so we mark it as none and then we back to the parent index 0 so for the parent index we now move to the right shell so which is 3 here so we recursively create the right subtree and now the current value is 3 the current node create a node with value 3 so we move left shell index 4 which is n and mark it as none and then we move to the right shell index 5 which is n so we mark it as a none and then we backtrack to the uh, parent index 0 so now we return the root node of the reconstructed tree Let's look at the code explanation. The serialization method performs a DFS, travel shell to serialize the tree, and then the deserialization method splits the serialized string and recursively rebuilds the tree. This is the basic idea over the code. And then we just uh, go over the each uh, line here. We just initialize an array here, and then we uh, define a serialization helper, so which takes the root node, and then it just checks if the root is none. So if as it just appends end to the uh, array, and then it returns. Here we append the root nodes value in the string format because uh, we want to send it as a string right at the end so that's why we do this and then we call this helper function for the left and the right tails so now we just invoke the OCLI's helper here uh, and then at the end we just return the uh, dot join of array which is a string so now the deserialization so here uh, it takes the data which is a string here so now we just split the data uh, and get uh, now we just split the data using the delimiter comma so we get the data in the array uh, so now we just initialize the, uh, i is equal to 0 this is the index for processing the array uh, so here we define the deserialization helper so here we use referring to the non-local i which means that i is defined in the outer function scope so we just uh, need to use the i same high here and then we start processing the array index so here if array index is n it means that uh, that is a null there because we append uh, for none we append n right so here similarly we just do the uh, opposite process so here when it is an n here we just return the none here and then uh, we also increment the i to say that this is processed right so and then uh, if it is not none then we process here so here um, is here also same pre order uh, same we have to construct the tree using the pre order traversal so we just process the root node and then it's left on right separate so here uh, we just uh, uh, form a tree node for the int of the i array of i because we had converted to string earlier now we need to change back to int and and then we increment the array index because we process this uh, root node right so then next step is to recursively create the left and the right shells so for that we invoke the helper function uh, and then at the end we return the root so here we just returning the deserialization helper which in turn would return the root this time uh, so complexity analysis so here the time time complexity is o of n and the space complexity is also o of n so how do we get this so let's look into the each method here and the serialization method the time complexity is it's so like we traverse the each of the binary tree node exactly once so since we are performing a depth search traversal the time complexity is o of n where n is the number of nodes in the tree the space complexity here is O of n uh, due to the space required for the output string. Additionally, in the recursive uh, implementation, the function call stack can go as deep as the height, uh, height of the tree, which can be O of n in the worst case for the skewed trees. So, for the deserialization here, uh, similar to the deserialization, we visit the each node exactly once during the deserialization. 
hence the time complexity is o of n so where n is the number of nodes in the tree the space complexity here is o of n for the recursive track as it can go as deep as the header additionally we need o of n space to store the array of serialized values so in summary both serialization and deserialization of the time complexity of o of n and a uh, space complexity of o of n so these complexities are optimal given that we need to visit and process the each node of the binary tree So demo on conclusion. So yeah, it beats 82.11 percent, almost the better solution. Conclusion: We explored the serialization and deserialization of the binary trees. These techniques are vital for various applications, from the data storage to the network communication. So mastering these algorithms enhances your problems from scratch and prepares for your coding interviews. Thank you.